Okay, we're in the kitchen, and first thing Deb told me to tell you guys was bless this mess. We have been canning since Monday, and uh, again, we've been canning until about 12.30 each night. That's our last pot of peas going on right now. They got another minute or so, a minute and a half. But there's our pressure cooker. That's what we use. It is a uh, Presto. It's a seven quart capacity. I think it holds nine pints. And uh, we have canned and canned and canned and canned with this thing. And uh, I know there's different styles. This is the one we picked, and uh, it's just been a workhorse for us. Uh, this thing has done really, really well. Um, let's see. For some of what we've been canning, uh, these two jars here are some black eyed peas that we canned. And let's see, we have canned. 63, 60, we can 67 quarts of black eyed peas. These are our uh, cream 40s. Uh, when this batch comes out of the uh, pressure cooker, that'll be 24 quarts of uh, the cream 40s. And we've got uh, 12 quarts of the, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, yeah, gum purple holes. And then our uh, uh, Crowder peas are just on the verge of coming in, but we haven't got the first picking off our Crowders yet. So anyway, we can, you know, 80, 90 quarts this week, and we'll have a two or three day reprieve, and then we'll start canning again with our next picking. So uh, we can all, we, we pick and shell all these things ourselves. Uh, we'll have the crew drop in and help us from time to time yesterday. Hang on just a second, guys. This thing's going off. Let me take this off. There's my timer. Hang on just a second. Okay. Now I've got that off. Those peas have cooked for 40 minutes. Uh, that's how long you pressure cook them. And now what you do, I send a little jiggler for the people that don't know. And all of you guys, I know I'm preaching to the, to the choir and have done this all your lives or for a long time now. If you can see that little stem right there, that's telling you your pressure that's on it, there's pressure on it, and you'll let this pot cool by itself, and then that stem will drop down. At that point, that tells you the, pre the pressure is released out of the pot, and uh, then you can take the little, here's your little jiggler, and you want that thing rattling while you're cooking, that tells you you got it where you need to have it. Uh, we use 10 pounds of pressure here in Florida for the peas. I know as you get into higher altitudes, the, the uh, weight will change on your I don't know what it's called, but I call it the jiggler. So anyway, but we use 10 pound weights here. And, uh, but just check your areas and if you get a pressure cooker, it'll tell you in the book, you know, your altitudes and all, what, you, what, what type of pressure you need to cook it on. And, uh, but what we do guys, was just uh, simple. And I'll get another video when we start ch uh, canning these peas again, but there's your mason jars. And what we do, we fill the peas up. We wash our peas good first. I've got another pot that sits on the side. Actually, it's right here sitting in the sink. We're through with it now. And that's what I put our peas in. And we just bring them to a bowl, turn them off, and then we start putting them into the jars. And what you want to do when you put them into the jars, I put very little liquid to begin with. I fill the jars up an inch below the uh, lid. And then I add some salt, a teaspoon. And uh, then when I come back and I dip the broth off the peas and I fill the jars up with that then put our lids and seal on, then they go into the pressure cooker. And uh, again, these peas, these fresh peas cook for 40 minutes. They pressure for 40 minutes. And then again, there's your end result. And uh, again, we've done 85 to 90 quarts this week. <clears throat> and we'll probably have at least that much again, possibly a little more. And, uh, but what we do once we get our jars out, I have a big pan of hot water and I pour that into my jars. And that scalds our jars and gets them disinfected, you may say, but plus when I put the hot pea broth out, the jars have already been hot, so it keeps them from, from messing up on us. But anyway, and then once they go through, once you take them out of the pressure cooker, <clears throat> you'll set them over to the side and you'll start hearing those lids pinging, and that's telling you they're vacuum sealing. And uh, again, we're eating peas from time to time that we canned in 2008. We're also eating stews that we canned in 2008. And, uh, but <clears throat> that's basically how you do it. But again, next week when we start getting these peas in again, 
I'll, I'll take you through the routine for the ones that have been on can before. One thing Deb and I like about canning, we like the taste, number one. Number two, there's no electricity needed. You can put this stuff on your pantry shelf and it'll be fine. Just keep it cool. Uh, our food room we've got out back, we keep it about 70 degrees and everything seems to be holding up really well. <clears throat> but if you work, a lot of people work anymore, both, you know, <clears throat> the man and the woman in the family. And uh, then you may have kids. So with both parents working, <clears throat> and Deb and I both are kind of, you might say, semi-retired, but we don't stop. I mean, we're always doing something in the garden. We still are involved in our business. We're in our business. We're in the paving business. And, um, but a lot of times we'll come in late in the evening, but Debbie will just throw on a pot of minute rice and like we'll take a jar of stew or whatever, or a jar of peas and man, they're already cooked. You just have to warm them and it's just convenience. It's, it's, it's convenience. And, uh, we've got where we love it. And that's another thing we do with our food saver, which let me move my Cheerios and there's Deb, some of her Deb, uh, Wyoming medicines that she takes. But there's our little food saver. And guys, these things are great as well. And we do food saver a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, we'll go out and I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna kinda ease that for right now and keep going. But our food saver we've learned to use and uh, we food saver a ton of meats and that kind of stuff. And uh, it, it's very convenient too because what we'll do, there's our food room. And uh, anyway, but what we do, we food saver, <clears throat> and a lot of times, and this, if you guys will take a little advice that don't do it, and again, I'm preaching to the choir to a lot of people, but a lot of times when Debbie cooks, say, for example, stuffed peppers, uh, or I'll do a big batch of lasagna, or she'll do stuffed pork chops, something that takes a lot of prep time, <clears throat> we go ahead and cook a bunch of it. And uh, I've got a pan, <laughs> I think it, it would feed a platoon of people. But anyway, we'll go ahead and cook everything. And, and when she does stuffed pork chops, she may do 15 or 20. Uh, same thing with her bell peppers. Lasagna, I always make a double or triple batch of it. And then we eat what we want the first day or two. And then everything that's left, we just cut it into proportions. And then we food savor it. And then what we've got is individual proportions that we've cooked and frozen and put up. And the reason we do this is number one, all that type of stuff I was just telling you about, the, the different foods, the peppers and pork chop, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's a long prep time and it makes a big mess. So what we do, we've learned to do is, if we're gonna make a mess, let's just make one mess. And then we have one mess, one prep and one cleanup. And then we might have four, five, six separate individual meals that we food saver and put in the freezer and then again when we come in late in the evening or whatever or you just didn't feel like cooking that night you can pull out a couple packs of that stuff for example Debbie and I and she may pull out you know uh, we, we freeze it in two pack pork chops for the uh, stuffed pork chops and she has one and I have one and and then again it's just thawing it out and then warming it the the meals ready lasagna same thing uh, spaghetti uh, we've even taken hams that we've cooked and sliced the hams up and then uh, put us two or three slices apiece and then maybe add some macaroni and cheese that we had with our ham uh, and peas for example that we've cooked that day and we'll put in the same in the same wrapper I mean I tell Debbie it all goes down the same pipe anyway so what we'll do we'll just food saver two or three ham slices we'll food saver a little wad of macaroni and cheese and we'll food saver some peas in it, all in the same food saver bag. And then there again, you can walk in, thaw that stuff out, heat it, and there you go. You got a good nutritious meal, ham, macaroni and cheese, and peas. And uh, Deb freezes her cornbread. Uh, so we've always got cornbread. She does, uh, makes with flour called hoe cake, and she'll do a big pan of hoe cake, and we'll freeze that. And then again, like I said, it's just convenience. And, and again, it's a time saver. Uh, because once more, if you'll stop and think about it, all these stuff are high prep meals. So if you're going to cook some, go ahead and cook extra. And like I said, freeze that stuff in these food savers. It tastes just like it did the day you can it. We've actually literally taken barbecue chicken, um, 
and we'll do a quarter or a half and put it in a food saver bag, barbecued chicken. And I have fed guests out here with barbecued chicken that was a year and a half old. The last time we did, we had a good friend named Willie that comes down, and he'll eat with us from time to time. And we had barbecued chicken, and Willie was asking, he said, man, when did you cook, when did you cook this? Because I didn't smell the grill <clears throat> when I came in, and I didn't, you know, your grill wasn't hot. And I said, is it good? He said, Doug, this is great chicken. But I told him then, I said, Willie, that chicken you're eating is a year and a half old, buddy. He couldn't believe it. But that's how well these food uh, saver systems work, and it, it keeps it. There's no freezer burn. So these are just some tricks that Debbie and I have learned, and I know you guys know a ton of other tricks too, And uh, but this works for us. I'm telling you what works for Deb and I. So anyway, I'm going to shut her down. Uh, I will get some canning videos for you guys this coming week. It, we just have been crushed. And then our internet servers quit yesterday. It just came back up today. We've been about two days without any any internet, so I couldn't do any postings or anything. And plus, with these videos, I've got to send them back home with our son, Mark, or we call Red, and uh, he uploads these things for us. So my, my service here is just not fast enough to upload these videos. So I'm going to wind her down. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this. Maybe we're telling you a few things that may help you a little bit. And uh, if you'd like to see some of our writings, uh, go to www.riding.com. R I D I N out the recession dot com, and um, or you can go if you like <clears throat> a good conservative uh, news site or publication. Uh, the Canada Free Press is is one, and uh, Judy and Brian with the Canada Free Press are just absolutely great people. Um, they kind of got Deb and I involved in this and sharing some of these things with you guys, and we love them to death. And uh, by the way, Judy, Brian, we're eating peas, buddy. <clears throat> I know you guys are done up there in Canada as far as growing right this minute, but uh, I tell you what, I'm going I'm to uh, box you guys up, son, and send you some. But their website is www.canadafreepress.com, and uh, they have a link where you can link to Riding Out the Recession with Deb and I on their site as well, but they're really, really good people, uh, carry a really, really good publication. And if you guys haven't, check them out. You may see that you really, really like what Judy and Brian are doing. So you guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. And God bless every one of you. Y'all take care.